Hello, so I'm going to show you how to get set up with Zoom so you can use it for teaching online. Um, Zoom's main advantage over Skype um, is it's got a mode where you can do something called enabling the original audio, which means it isn't filtered the same way other services filter it to try and optimize the sound for speech. Um, so you tend to get better audio quality. Um, there are also a few other features that are quite neat that I'll show you. But anyway, um, to get started, first you need to download and install Zoom. So if you go to any search engine, type in Zoom, um, the top link is the one you want. Um, then you can sign up directly from the website or you can go straight to downloading Zoom, which is what I'm going to do. So you go to resources at the top of the page, you can do download Zoom clients. Um, you want the one Zoom client for meetings, you just click download on that and off that goes downloading. So once it's downloaded, you just need to go and find your downloads folder to see where it's downloaded. There it is, Zoom. Just open up that file um, and it will do the installation for you. Just follow the instructions through. Um, and then once it's installed, you'll be met with this Zoom. So you have the option of signing in um, or creating a new account. If you haven't got an account, just click on the sign up three. Um, you can create an account or you can log in with a Google account or a Facebook account if you prefer. Um, I've already got an account, so I'm just going to log in on here and tap in all my details. Off we go. And this is what Zoom looks like. So there are a few really important things to do with the audio on Zoom. And the main one is knowing how to enable what's called original audio. So to do that, what you want to do is go to the settings. So um, that will be at the top of the page, whether you're on Windows or Mac. And you go into preferences. So make sure you're on audio preferences. Um, then you want to go down to advanced and click on advanced. Then you want to check this box that says show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. Um, and that's what we're going to need later. So I'm going to tick that box, then I can close the settings. Now, there are a few different ways you can use Zoom. Um, you can just create a new meeting by clicking on that, and then it generates a link for the meeting that you send to someone, and then they, um, they open up the link in their browser or in Zoom, um, and then they connect to your video call. Um, but for the purposes of this, we want the students' parents to be calling us rather than us to have any... Um, outgoing calls. So what you need to do is you need them to add you and the way they do that is they go to contacts um, then they click the little add button here, add a contact and they just type in your email address um, and away you go. So I've got another account set up um, so I'm now going to use that to add my account here so that you can see what happens when someone adds you. So you can see it says Alistair Penman would like to add you as a contact. That's my other account. So if I click on there, um, I can accept or decline. So this would be your um, parent adding you. So I'm just going to do accept. Now they can call you um, should they so wish. The way they would do that, they go to contacts, um, they find where you are and they just click um, meet with video. Um, so I'm going to do that now. Um, from my other computer. So now you can see I've got an incoming call, so I'm going to accept this. And you see it asks me if I want to join with or without video, so I'm going to join with video. And here we go in our meeting. And you can see I've got this option here of turning on the original sound, and that's what I want to do to make sure that my sound isn't being filtered at all. I just click on that and it enables it. If you can't see that for any reason, if you go to the little arrow here next to the microphone, you can go into the audio settings, go advanced and check this box to show the option to enable it. Um, now, you're going to want to record this again for safeguarding reasons. Um, what you'll find that when you click record, it says please request record permission from the meeting host. And this is the one thing that you need the parent to do for you. Um, what they've got to do on their computer, they've got to click on participants. And you can see here, 
um, because I've called myself just for the purposes of this demo. You've got Alistair Penman, the host. So that's the student's parent who is the host and Alistair Penman, me. So this is the teacher in the call. Now on their computer, they would select mine and click more and they'd have an option which is allow recording. So they need to click on that. So I'm just going to do that on that computer now um, and then you'll see that it lets me record. So now you can see it says host allows you to record the meeting. So I'm going to click record and that starts us off recording. Um, I don't really need that window anymore so I can click on participants to get rid of that. Um, if you're having any problems with the connection there's a little chat there so you can write text um, but you shouldn't need to. So again I'm going to get rid of that chat. Um, so there are some other quite neat features of Zoom um, that all come from this share screen button. And so if I click on that I can go to whiteboard and click share and what that does is it basically gives me a blank screen um, that I can draw whatever I want on, write on etc. Um, if the student's forgotten the notes in an arpeggio or something I can write them down for them or you can draw diagrams, do whatever you want on there really. Um, then when you've done what you want you just click stop share. Other useful things you could share would be say for example if you had a piece of music the student was working on and you wanted to be able to um, annotate it for them or write things on it. Just so happens I've got a piece of music open here. So if I open that up and then I go to share screen it shows me all the things that are open on my computer at the moment. I just go to that one, I have a piece of music, click share and now the student will be seeing this on their screen. Um, if I go up to the top of the screen I get some options. Uh, the most useful one is that I can annotate it. Um, this is similar to the annotations I could do on the whiteboard. So I can draw on it, um, I can ring things, or if they kept forgetting a sharp I could write it on for example, um, or I could go to text, write on a note name, oh, um, like that. Um, you could think there are loads and loads of possibilities. Um, you can undo them as well or you can clear everything. So when you're doing all of that it's not editing your copy of the file on your computer at all, it's just kind of overlaying things on top and once you um, go out of sharing all of those go away. So once you're done with that you just click stop share. And that's probably about all you need to know. Um, so once you're done you just go and you click leave meeting. Do you want to leave this meeting? Yes. And that leaves the meeting. Um, so at the end of the meeting you'll be met with this screen converting meeting recording um, and this is basically just because Zoom saves it in a slightly funny format whilst it's doing the recording so once you finish it converts it into mp4 which is a very standard video format that anything can open. Um, so once that's done it will take you to where it's saved it um, and you can rename it if you want. So you see you get these three files if you wanted to watch back the video um, it's the one at the bottom, the .mp4, which is the one you use. The other ones, it's basically just um, saving if you just want the audio. That's the one at the top. Um, and the other ones are sort of container file. Um, but you can go, um, if I go to the folder where that's saved, you see um, they're all saved as slightly different things. So that was this one, today at 521. So if I wanted to rename that, you can see I was messing about with this earlier. So I've got a few recordings on here. So I recorded student one's lesson, say this is student two's lesson on the 20th of March and then you've got that saved there and you can keep them however you wish to organise them. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to Zoom. Um, if you want to schedule lessons there is a tool you can use, you can click the schedule button um, and you can set up a meeting and it will send the details to the parent. Um, but I think it's generally easier if you just get them to call you at the right time. Uh, but you can explore that if you want to. Um, of course, um, you just have to remember for them to be able to call you, you do have to have Zoom open, so don't forget that. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much everything. Um, but let me know if you have any problems.